do. Good morning, everyone. Let's start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Current today is about freedom. Last Thursday was Veterans Day. Dear Lord, it's, it's the soldier, not the reporter, who has given us freedom of the press. It is the soldier, not the poet, who has given the freedom of speech. It's the soldier, not the campus organizer, who has given us the freedom to demonstrate. It is the soldier who salutes the flag, who serves beneath the flag, and whose coffin is draped by the flag. Amen. Amen. Okay, uh, item number one, the Commissioner's Office is requesting the Board approve and execute the minutes for the meeting of September 28th, 2021. Second. Yes. Yes. Jerry? On November 15th, for the Department on Aging, I approved an unpaid medical leave of absence for Sherry Palumbo, Recreation and Education Assistant, for up to 12 weeks beginning January 19, 2022. This will extend her probationary period of <coughs> up to 12 weeks, the total amount used. Therefore, the Airport Authority approved, approved the request for partial payment number four for Hummel Construction for the T-Hanger project in the amount of $127,767.59. And it concurred with Bainbridge Township trustees in not requesting a hearing a liquor license being requested by Speedway LLC doing business as Speedway number 3510 located at 7353 North Aurora Road, Bainbridge Township. And for water resources, I approved hiring Brian Kane to the position of maintenance worker to be effective November 22nd. 2021 at the rate of $18.54 per hour with a one-year probationary period. This offer of employment is contingent upon the successful completion of the required pre-employment conditions. Thank you, Jerry. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, today's financials include an appropriations transfer from the Commissioner's Contingency Account to ADP Contract Services to secure the remediation support that is necessary to bring the county's network and IT infrastructure up to current security protocols. Appropriations transfers to the sheriff for miscellaneous refunds, reimbursements, and web checks that were deposited into the general fund. There's a cash transfer from the general fund to victim witness assistance to pay the local match for the VOCA grant period October 2021 through September 2022. Among the encumbrances are then and now from the coroner's office to Cuyahoga County Coroner's Office for autopsies not previously encumbered. Travel requests from the engineer's office to attend the 2021 County Engineers Association of Ohio Winter Conference. And a contract purchase order from Water Resources to Woodford Excavating LLC to complete the Bainbridge Township Waterline Loop Project. Among the vouchers are $1,919,977.71. From the Commissioner's Office to Donnelly's Independence Incorporated for pay request number 12 for the new county office building project, 59,569.06. From Community Development to Acquire Fire Protection Incorporated for 2019 block grant work completed at the Maple Leaf Residences. And $112,820.92 from the Sheriff's Office to Motorola Solutions Incorporated for our annual Spillman software maintenance. Uh, last year it was a uh, hundred and eight four eighty one sixty seven, so a little over four thousand dollar increase. Um, so the supplemental appropriation transfer for the ADP contract services, what uh, what is the dollar amount on this? I, I I'm not familiar with them, so uh, missed that one. They requested us to transfer forty eight thousand dollars and one hundred forty eight thousand one hundred dollars into their contract services account. This is uh, for services from Black Box. I yeah, yeah, yeah. So when when was this a request? When did this request come in? Earlier. Last week. <laughs> Last week? See, I don't remember that. No. They didn't discuss it with the commissioner's office. No. I don't remember hearing that. I mean, we watched a presentation, and but there was no dollar amount mentioned to us. So. This is for the continuation of Black Box's work. Yeah, well, I, I don't, I'm not familiar with it. 
I'd move the table there. You know, this hasn't been discussed as, as, as a dollar amount. We've discussed the, um, the pro, you know, going through this remediation project, and but there's been no dollar amounts discussed with, with me. I, I don't know about the other two commissioners. Yeah, you know, I totally agree. I'd move the table until they can explain a little more. I mean, it just at least let's talk about the, the scope of the project. I mean, I know they've been doing some work for the last month or two months, correct? Yes. And I'm in support of that work, but um, there's never been an official uh, business plan put in front of me to say, here's how much we're going to spend on this. I think what they're basically doing is they're securing like a block of support time mm -hmm. from Black Box. So as they uh, are continuing through the project, if there's anything that they need help with mm -hmm. from a uh, Black Box standpoint, then they would, would use them similar to what Mike Kurzinger does with the CSJ over there when he runs into something he can't doesn't have the expertise on then he calls CSJ and uses a block of time for support. So so the dollar amount is 48,100? Correct. That seems like a pretty definite number for a you know a potential contract service just you know right. yes where did that number come up with? I mean, I don't, you know. I'm not sure. I, I don't have, unfortunately, I don't have a copy of the email that we received from um, Pam McMahon okay. up at the auditor's office. But I'm assuming uh, it is a block of hours, and whatever their hourly rate is okay. times that block of hours equals the 48,100. So they've been doing work for the last, you know, month or so, correct? You know, going through some. Correct. Our the system. Original contract with the our original contract, and do you know how much we've spent so far up to date with that? I do not know that my head. Okay, see so all this. I'm, I'm until we get that cleared up. I'm not going to move forward. I, I second that table. So the motion would be to approve the financials, with the exception of the appropriations transfer to ADP. Yeah, correct. Yeah, as is important as the whole process is, we just need a little bit more clarification. Yeah, you know, a little more breakdown. Yeah, I want to okay. see. I want to see the the, uh, the invoice or the plan for it. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. Okay, so I have a motion and a second to approve the financials, um, with the exception of the transfer of the forty-eight one. Yeah. Mr. Delay. Hey. Mr. Yes. Mr. Delay. Yes. All right. Thanks, Adrian. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. it. Mm -hmm. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm well. Good to see you. I hope you all are doing well. Oh, yeah. It's a cool morning. That's right. Um, we have two items uh, before you this morning that are kind of linked together. Um, and uh, I understand that there's some outstanding questions regarding the process and some of the costs and things like that. And I'd uh, be willing to answer those. And if we need to delay this, that would be fine as well. Um, the uh, request was to approve and authorize the President of the Board to execute the administrative settlement um, for out uh, or missing rent on the property the, that we're in the process of trying to purchase. And then also to approve the Board uh, to execute the agreement and um, apply for the grant, I think, is in here as well. Um, the application, the, the application for the grant that. isn't, but the signing of the, the purchase agreement. Um, so item number four, the $2,800, $2,850 is for lost rent? For lost rent. The tenants moved out at the uh, end of last month, and it's going to be vacant until we can go through the closing, um, which would be pending the distribution of the grant funds. Mm -hmm. and so so let so me ask you, was there a, um, a, a deal or a contract made with the property owner um, that stipulated if it were to go past a certain date that they are to collect back rent? Well, what uh, originally, if, if you'll recall, we were trying to do this under last year's program, mm -hmm. and we did not think that there would be any missing time uh, between the, the closing and, and where the tenants had moved out. Uh, we had tried to orchestrate everything so that it occurred in September. And um, unfortunately, the, uh, when, we, when it came down to it, the FAA kicked this part of that program off to this year. 
So it created a whole new set of circumstances, which is why we're asking for the three months rent. Who's asking for it? Um, it's uh, the property owner, uh, Mr. Mm -hmm. Hodgins, mm -hmm. has requested uh, that. Mm -hmm. So that's three months rent? Three months rent uh, at 950 a So month. he agreed to, let me get this straight. So we, we, we had an offer made, or we mm -hmm. made him an offer? We made him an offer. On an appraisal? Almost a year ago. Okay. Or not almost a year ago. It would have been last, uh, I think, April or May when we were uh, putting this deal together. Okay. Um, and then now it's taken. 175000 175 for the purchase, okay. And then the new price of 177850 includes now the um, mm -hmm. three months rent. Okay. So, so that's, that's inside of the two. Okay. Yeah. Um, but we, we agreed to a price um, of $175,000, or he agreed to a price of $175,000 originally, correct? Uh, originally, yes. Okay. And then. Um, <clears throat> what the FAA didn't get this this application in time, or what? What? Well, there's the, uh, some of the moving parts. The the uh, tenants had problems locating a new house um, as part of the program. Uh, a couple of the properties that they were trying to purchase didn't pass inspections, so those got delayed. Mm. Um, so through the number of delays that uh, happened, we weren't able to execute all the parts that the FAA required prior to their cutoff date of September 10th. So did we have to pay for the tenants to get transferred out? Or? Um, we have paid for their uh, um, relocation expenses and uh, their moving expenses. And when you say relocation, so how much have we paid in, in addition to this 175? The, uh, or that's not included in this? That's not included in that. Mm. This is just for the property itself. Mm. Um, the total grant would include all the relocation expenses. Um, the airport authority agreed to go ahead since we, the FAA pretty much assured us that we'd be getting this and made that expense. It was 37, I, I, I'm probably going to be off a little bit, but 37.5 I believe was their allowed. Uh, so we gave these FAA. tenants 37,500? Yeah, I'll, I'll make a motion to table this until we could get a little more clarification because I just, this this is Yeah, really I'll second that. Yeah. I, um, I've got a lot of questions about this. I mean, I was familiar with the idea and then support of purchasing this property, but I did not understand the, um, I, I've never quite, you know, I've, so, I've bought and sold property mm -hmm. in my life. I'm not nice. unfamiliar with that, but I'm unfamiliar with um, putting people up and and paying their rent and relocation and all that kind of stuff. Once you agree to a deal, that's the deal. And it, you know, unless there's something in the contract stipulating changes to that deal, or you know, not being able to close in time, or that you both can walk away from the deal, we could do that too, right? We could walk away from the deal, right? Mm -hmm. so, so let me ask yeah, you: thirty-seven thousand five hundred. What did that pay for? Um, the FAA requires when we're purchasing a residential property. Um, to relocate the tenants, um, they're allowed, uh, I believe it's three and a half years of, of rent for the differential in rent to whatever the, the market is bearing at that point. So that, that's coming out of the FAA grant money or is that coming out of our pocket? The, uh, ultimately the FAA grant. Mm -hmm. It's, it's a uh, recoverable okay. um, cost. So uh, these people literally are going to have three years of free living? Yes. This sounds in wow, okay for, for FAA requirements. And, and we're and we're looking for a, a an extra twenty eight hundred dollars. This sounds like a fantastic deal from the crack. I'm I, I, I'm, I'm confused. I'd, I'd like to see all the addendums from the original contract because it just keeps like it's growing, growing, growing. So, so if we could get that in. Mm -hmm. What um, so I heard. Through the grapevine, since we missed that window yes. uh, this year, now it would have been a zero um, dollar match on our behalf. And now that it's going because we missed that deadline, now we're going to have to pay a, some type of fee or fine or something. Or is that Not right? a fine. Um, FAA typical grants require uh, or are ninety percent funded by FAA and then a ten percent local match. Uh, for the last two years, um, because of COVID. 
um, they received extra money, COVID money, to pay the local portion. So we, we've still had that portion, except it was paid by the FAA. Okay, so two years. about how much would we have to pay them extra? Um, or our match, what will our match be, I guess? Well, we're still trying to get the, the final numbers on that grant, oh. and that's one of the reasons why I'd like to delay this, because yeah. those numbers should be coming in a, a, a pretty quick yeah. year. I mean, I thought it was a good idea to buy this piece of property, mm -hmm. and, you know, but this deal seems to be kind of uh, unraveling a little bit here. So how does this going to work if this deal does not go through with that $37,500? Um, we will have to eat that, the airport authority. But put it up, unfortunately. Wait, what, say that again? The, what what money would we have to eat? Um, the, the money that's already been expended uh, that would have been reimbursable uh, had the grant gone through. Like what? Um, I should have that number off the top of my head, but it, it's, it's uh, the almost forty thousand dollars for the relocation and, and that that thirty seven five hundred, okay. I believe it is. Hmm. Um, consultant fees mm -hmm. and um, I, I guess it would be just those two things. So, uh, what? How how big is this piece of land? How big is it? Acres or? Um, I don't know off the top of my head. I, I think like it's one around or two, an acre, three, three quarters to an acre. So, so, so this, so this request for this additional money, where did this come? Who, who made this request? Um, through the FAA program, that he's entitled to these types of things. So, when this was delayed, then he made the, the request to be reimbursed the missing rent from the time. That the uh, tenants move out. So there's something in the tenants. in the contract that stipulates they can, if this goes past a certain amount of time, they can request additional. Is that correct? Uh, it was part of the FAA guidelines. He could have always requested it mm. uh, from the onset. I've got some uh, land for sale too. You think they'd be interested? In <laughs> Is it adjacent to an airport? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I um, I don't always agree with the FAA's methods and yeah. requirements for doing yeah let's let's deals. get some more info on this and come back at it i mean okay. are we under some type of time frame again here are we going to get dinged if we don't do this in x amount of days or we do we have some time to look at this again um we have time to look okay, at it. okay. and okay. i guess the only other option is, is 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 just you know at this point in time if we just basically say no on the whole deal we're just out to thirty seven thousand five hundred. Mm -hmm. Okay. And our consultant fees to, to date. Um, okay. But, you know, I'd like to see how much it will cost us if we if we yeah. can purchase the property. You know, mm -hmm. how much would, what's our match? If you could figure that out yeah. for me. Yeah, the original estimate was with all the FAA requirements and, and that and the purchase of each property, the grant was going to be in the neighborhood of 300000 and, and our match would be what? Uh, 10%. Oh, 10%. Okay. So. so would that 30,000... And um, part of that would be ODAT, uh, uh, ODOT too. So um, it's, there's a 10% local match, 5% from ODOT, and then 5% from... That they would pick up of ours? Yeah. Or do yeah. we have to pay additional? No, that... Uh, so it would be 15 from us and 15 from ODOT. Exactly. Okay. Thank you. And that would cover that thirty-seven five. Yes, that would cover everything required by the FAA to acquire. Okay. This, this Can property. you do me a favor or do us a favor and put this all down on right in writing so we could look at? I can see what this deal looks like on paper. I would be more than happy to do. Okay. As far as the land goes, report. the acres is point two eight zero six. Like two eights. Okay. I was transposing the two numbers. Yeah. Point two eight zero. So it's small, quarter of an acre. Yeah. yeah. Well, and what's the five bedroom house? Um, and I forget the exact square footage. There's a house on it. Okay, yes. I know. I'm familiar with it. And then, um, what's the what was the intent or plan for the future? I know there's you know some future future plans, mm -hmm. but is this something in the immediate future? Well, in the immediate future was to raise the house. Okay. And uh, restore the land. Mm -hmm. And um, ultimately, um, perhaps. 
make it available for some sort of commercial development of a restaurant. Related to the, to related the airport. To the airport. Yeah. Okay. So it complement the airport. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Sorry, Rick. I nope. apologize. To to I totally didn't understand. Mean to and throw you in a spin that. here, but um, you know, I'm just I I feel a lot more comfortable knowing all the facts before we start moving in forward into this. And yeah. as would I, I was hoping yeah. to have those uh, total numbers for you uh, so that I could report on them today. But I'm still waiting on them from the yeah, great. Consultant. Awesome. Thank you so, so much. Thanks. Thank, Thank you for sharing. Yep. Appreciate yep. it. Yep. So I have a motion and a second to table from Mr. Spiller. Aye. Aye. Yes, and that's for four and five. Correct. Yes. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. Yep. We'll talk soon. Okay. Have a great day. All right. And uh, send that formal report uh, through Chris Nation. That's okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Great. Thanks. 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 Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Item six on the agenda is requesting the board approve and execute change order number one and final decreasing the contract with Ron Ant Paving the asphalt resurfacing of Auburn Road in Newberry Township in the amount of $22,784.25. The uh, decrease basically is we non-performed the pavement repairs after we know that so the underlying pavement was a lot better than expected. So right on that. I'll make that motion. Second. Hey. Yes. Yes. So what do we do with <coughs> Auburn Road and, and Mayfield and Well we're not doing much of anything. Steve. Well State. East Washington is now open to it, so okay. that is back to you know maintaining traffic. So we've got some things to clean up at the end, but um, and they're working, doing some work today, and we'll get some more stretching a little bit of good weather tomorrow. So but moving forward, we'll get it, but it is back open to a traffic, so everybody can utilize that. Do you um, on that Auburn Mayfield project? Are they um, what's the time schedule on that when they're going to get back to I haven't uh, spoke with ODOT okay. um, I know that they shifted over and they're doing all the work on the north side so all the work on the south side so they're working on the lane widening on the north side and working through the intersection gotcha. um, what what their plan is I can reach out and find out and send you some information to them. very good yeah I mean it's disappointing and I get it that there's you know a shortage of help and all that but it's mm -hmm. ridiculous yeah and I just, I, I think that that's the same construction company doing East Washington too. Uh, Eclipse Company is the general on both, or the you know, prime on both. I, I think that you guys really need to need to be aware of that when they start bidding again, because this is just not good. I mean, we, you know, we've put out a lot of people, our phones have, well, all of us have been, have, have gotten calls on this and it's just, I don't think it's right. And I get it, they had excuses of gas lines and all this other stuff, but you know something, it's, there's nobody working there. That's the bottom line. <coughs> so it's like, if you want to bid on a project, you know, mean what you say and say what you mean, but this is crazy. Crazy. I'm sure that. So, thanks for coming in. Nick. All right. Yeah. Thanks. All right, buddy. Hey Mike. Good. How are you? Good. How you doing? Good morning. Mike Santilli from the Sheriff's Office. Um, item 7. Um, the Sheriff's Office uh, is requesting board approval uh, for the second amendment to a ground tower lease at our main tower site, uh, 125 18 Merritt Road. Um, the company is um, looking to increase the area that they are leasing for the purposes of a generator and uh, backup power for the site. The cellular companies are now becoming under scrutiny for running on battery power when um, power goes out and with power failures getting more and the length of them getting more, um, they're starting to go to generators like we do. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. I'll make that motion. Second. Hi, Mr. Yes. Yes. Thank you very Mike. much. Yeah. Good good job. Job. Yep. Take care. That was easy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good morning. Hi. Good morning. Good. Okay. Um, so what I have on today is a um, 
contract with Western Reserve um, for our agency to provide home energy assistance outreach, which is the HEAP program, uh, to individuals who qualify as low income to help with utility assistance. It's a reimbursement grant. We submit a report on how many folks we help. We help fill out the applications. We also get reimbursement is tied to. Very different from JFS. They get a HEAP grant, but it's, it's different. We, this is yeah. for application assistance. Yeah. Sounds good. Good I'll job. Make that motion. Yeah. Second. Just for the Hi. Hi. Yes. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Morning. Good morning. Good morning, morning. So back in June, with your approval, we submitted our application to the state of Ohio for the PY 2021 Community Development Program. Um, Black Grant program, and so today for item number nine, we are requesting that you approve and execute the grant agreement for grant number B F 21 1 AZ 1 for the projects chosen, which include Camp Old Me Dakota, DDC Clinic, Department on Aging, Women Safe, and Fair Housing in the amount of $284,000. I'll make that motion. Second. Mr. Hey, Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Maintenance. Please come. Good morning. 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 Good a service contract agreement with Simon Roofing. Uh, this is to do roof repairs. Uh, this is a one-year contract, so if we get a leak or something, we've got all the paperwork done and we can get the work. Make that motion. Second. Commissioner Spadilla? Aye. Commissioner Yes. Commissioner McGuire? Yes. Okay. Were you okay. plowing yesterday? Oh, no, we did some Breaking them in? Oh, no, okay. yeah. Yeah. Found all our small glitches. So all right. Good test run. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Test run. I don't want to see them. <laughs> Did you use a little salt? <laughs> we used a little bit of salt yesterday. So uh, we got a bunch of new guys. So we're just trying to get them all trained up on the yeah. machines. Stay and, off the grass. So yeah, staying off the grass and <laughs> not laying too much salt down. So uh, they're getting it. So good, good deal. Thanks. Yeah. Man. No, thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> All right, um, starting with number 11, we're asking the board to approve a maintenance, uh, a contract maintenance form with Banff Welding and Fabricating, um, increase the contract by 5,000 um, with a new total of 35,000 over a three year period. I'll make that motion. Uh, second, is it, is we Worked with these guys before? We have been all year. Yeah, and okay. Excellent. Okay, yeah. great. So, so we try to keep some money on the books with them because little things yep, pop up. Yeah, always. Yep. Yeah, they that's really a, great. That's a key having those guys handy to be able to fix something in a jam and somebody to weld or, weld or fabricate. So, yeah. excellent. Especially when you have 75 locations. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> things yeah. that they could be used for. Yeah. And parts availability and everything else. So yeah. yeah. The owner's really good and, and always available, you know, ready to bring it help. So that's Great. helpful. <laughs> yeah. Commissioner Spiller. Hi. Commissioner Lyon. Yes. Commissioner Lyon. Yes. All right. Next is for the Almond Oil Company contract. We are asking the board to prove and execute um, the first addendum to that contract. Um, it's moving fund allocation for, um, for the third year to the first year in a total of thirty thousand. Um, and the second year in the 25,000. Um, this is basically just kind of moving the money around to where we need it, um, and uh, but sticking with the original contract price. Okay. Make the motion. Second. Which is one. Hi. Yes. Yes. Okay. Next, we're um, asking the board to approve and authorize the president of the board to execute um, the OWDA LGA payment instruction form. Uh, relating to payments from loan funds for construction services for Woodford Excavating, and this is for the Bainbridge Waterline um, closure project. Make the motion. Second. Interest in Hey, July. Yes. Yes. With, with the loan funds, is that um, a loan, actual loan? 
Yes. Okay. When when will that when will they get started on that? Uh, as soon as we can. The um, the purchase order is being created today. Oh, it was okay. part of the financial. So, so it's it's, the, then we can give them the notice. And this is getting them set up for them. This is yeah. so that we can get okay. reimbursement right for what we pay out of pocket. Very yeah. good. Okay. Or this might actually this is to pay. They will get paid directly by the loan agency, so we right. don't have to pay. We don't have to have the seed money. For right. This yeah. will go directly to them. Right. Yep. Yes. Yes. Which oh, worked really well oh, for the Chardonnay. will come through the board first. Right. But the funds will go to them. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. Okay, number 14, um, we're requesting the board to approve submission of a list of delinquent sewer user fees, water fees, tap and installments, and s subsequent certifications to the Java County Auditor in accordance with ORC 1, uh, I'm sorry, 6117.02 and the Java County Department of Water Resources Rules and Regs in the total amount of $457,984.96. And then there's the breakdown um, of bridge and penalties. And this is, we do this every year. This is under the Ohio Revised Code. Those who don't pay their sewer water bill, we can certify it to their property taxes. This is certifying it to their property taxes. Okay. And it's been pretty consistent. Last year was down, but this is consistent with the last three or four years prior to that. Um, the amount. Okay. Make my motion. Second. Yes. Yes. Okay. The last item at the board um, requesting the board to approve and um, execute resolution number 21-145, um, the appointment of board member James Dvorak as the chief executive officer and certifying representative for the proposed Aquila wastewater treatment plant upgrade and further approve and authorize the Chief Executive Officer to execute the State of Ohio Public Works Commission application for financial assistance. So moved. Second. Just an aye. Aye. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, one question on 14. Has the uh, people falling behind in penalties, is that growing like in the last three years? Uh, it's pretty con It's pretty consistent. Yeah. We're a lot, we have a lot of customers who don't ever pay their bill they prefer to have it go under their property taxes for some reason uh, you know it's, because it's something that I've kept track of since I started with with the department is you know just to see that same thing is that number going up or down we have a few you know it's one or two payments that are partial payments that they've missed but there's a there's probably I'm trying to think of it 200 to 300 of our customers who just don't pay their bill, and then it goes on their taxes, and then they pay their taxes the next year. So the, if, these certified amounts that we put, we you know we get about 99 percent of it back through the property taxes. So it goes on the property tax, but then um, as far as you getting it back, how do you well, like, does it still get back to water resources yes. somehow? Yeah, it comes like, back to water resources. It gets, paid, it gets paid through the property taxes. <laughs> And then you know that that money. Oh, I see. When yeah. it gets reaches the auditor's office, they transfer it. Transfer it back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. It so finally gets to the right place. Right. And is it every year, or is it just, what if the um, so their okay so their property tax just keeps going up or X amount? Well, yeah, depending on what the if, if the sewer rates or water rates go up, but yeah. they use more water than they had yeah. the previous years. Right. So that, that their rates go up, but they're okay. They're, like I said, there's. 200 to 300 customers who just choose to list. not pay, not pay their bill at all, yeah. and well, just throws on their property taxes. That's the list. Yeah. Okay. No, I've never. I have, a, I have a guess on why they do it, but I've never figured out exactly why they do it. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you. No, I think they're just yeah. So with the possible. Upgrades in that on the youth center. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask Braden Wood to come and kind of do a presentation on you know what they what they do, how they do stuff. I know there's always been some confusion about, and I know Vic and I joked about it with uh, the people thinking that Ravenwood is a is a county agency when it's when it is not. It's mm -hmm. a private you know, company. So I've asked them to come and do a presentation for the board and for the public on what they actually do. Oh, good. Thank you. Hi, Vicki. How are you? How are you? I'm good. Good. Thank you for this opportunity. You, thanks for coming yeah. in. I brought you some Appreciate it. presents. Great. I thought it might be helpful to have some things in writing. Sure, thank you. As I talk through some of this. Yeah. So 
I wanted to do some introductions first. I'm, I am Vicki Clark, and I'm president and CEO. I've been with Ravenwood for 35 years. Oh, <laughs> no. So I say I'm the archives department, too, so, yeah. right? Um, I, I started as a, the, the director of the sex abuse treatment program. I have a master's in counseling, so I started on the therapeutic side. About nine years ago, I became the CEO, and prior to that, I was the chief operating officer. And I brought some guests with me. Um, Britton Paul is our chief operating officer. She's been there for about 24 years. Morning. And she's a social worker. Next to her is Natalie Smith. She's our director of child and family services and oversees the Geauga Youth Center. So I thought you might want to hear from her. And then also Mary Beth O'Neill is our the, excuse me vice president of our board and a local realtor. So she's a nice. Morning. Morning. So our mission is that we build hope, empower individuals and families, and strengthen our neighborhoods through mental health and addiction services. So our focus really is on the needs of the community around mental health and addiction services. Um, some background about us is we are a 501c3, a charitable organization. We were incorporated in 1966 and have served the community since that time. We were originally located in a house on Mayfield Road that I think is now Joy's Place. So we were there till about 1986 when through some means, which I don't understand, the Department on Aging and Ravenwood came together to build that building. Originally, the first floor, ground floor of the old building was the Department on Aging and Ravenwood had the top two floors. And over a period of 20 years, I think, the Department on Aging added on to the building a whole new wing, three floors of that. So I still don't understand how it, that came to be, but we actually owned our portion and the county owned the grounds and kind of the outside of the building. Seems like almost a condo arrangement, but mm -hmm. that, that's how it came to be. Um, we employ about 180 people throughout the county, and we serve about 4,000 clients a year. We see um, about 13 to 1,400 new individuals every year that come in for an intake. Um, where am I at? Um, we have multiple sites. Uh, we, our main site, we call it our main site, is the, the Ravenwood Drive site, which we purchased from the county a couple years ago. Thank you. Uh, that's been a blessing to us. It's really worked well. Uh, we also have a site at um, 695 South Street, which is in the Mars Electric Building. So mm -hmm. that is the site we have. We have a site in Middlefield that we've had for about 20 years, a little over 20 years. Uh, that was developed to better serve the Amish population. Uh, but we do we see everyone there. It has counseling and psychiatry at that site. And a couple of years ago, we started a site in Chesterland, and we're really still developing that one. That doesn't have a lot of clients, but we're we're working on that. Where's so that on Mayfield? It is on Mayfield in it's Cambridge mm -hmm. Square. Mm -hmm. um, do you know that mm -hmm. building? It's past McDonald's going west on the south side of the road. Okay, it's a pretty large. Where the bank is there? Or is across the street, the ice cream place. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yep. We kind of have the, there's a little oh, right, ring right. off to the side uh, yeah, and we're yeah. in there. Yeah. So we've done that deliberately to kind of spread out through the community to serve clients and, and be more local because it, it can be difficult traveling. And then in your packet, there's two handouts for you. The one is a one page handout um, that I thought might be helpful to talk about our services programs and services, we really provide a wide continuum of services. We, we serve clients of all ages, adults and children, mental health and addiction. And as you can see on this, and I'll go through it quickly, we, we do everything from emergency services to residential treatment. So it's a long continuum of care. So under emergency services, we have the COPE line, which is a hotline uh, that people can call 24-7 if they have a mental health or addiction emergency. It also serves as a domestic violence line in the child abuse and elder abuse um, uh, line to call if, if you suspect abuse or neglect. Then we ha have our crisis intervention, we sometimes call that emergency services, where we have a therapist available 24-7 to respond to those emergencies that need somebody of that level. So if you call the COPE line in the middle of the night, somebody is suicidal, we would have a therapist that would call them back, would meet them in the community, go out with the police, 
meet them at the hospital, whatever we need to do to help intervene in that crisis. Um, on the mental health side, we have services that start, pretty much everybody that come in, comes in has an intake and assessment and receives a diagnosis. And then the services range from counseling, which can be individual, family, group, to um, intensive programs uh, like the child and adult day treatment programs. Those are programs where they're a group and they meet five days a week and you can be there three hours a day. So it's, it's the idea between those intensive um, programs are to keep people out of psychiatric hospitalizations, get them stabilized. We also offer a specialized program for sex abuse, and that one started in 1986 when I came to the agency to address the issue of child sexual abuse. Mm -hmm. Amish program we provide, and we also have a therapist, a full-time therapist in the jail and a psychiatrist in the jail. Under the substance use disorder side, we, we offer again assessment and diagnosis counseling, and then we have what's called intensive outpatient programming, and that is for somebody who has been diagnosed with a severe substance use disorder that would come in three days a week for two, three hours at a time and, and address their addiction. And we offer that for adults and adolescents. Medication assisted treatment is having a psychiatrist or a nurse practitioner prescribe medications that help with opioid addiction or alcohol addiction. Um, we have criminal justice therapists. We have a quick response team that works mostly with the sheriff's department. They respond to an overdose and they go out um, and meet with the, hopefully the client, but, but often with the family to, to offer resources and try to get people engaged in treatment. Peer supports are a new program where somebody who has already gone through either a mental health disorder or addiction um, is in recovery and is employed then to go out and help people. Because as you know, if you've been through something, it, it really helps bring somebody along. Um, is there training for a person to be a peer support? Yes. They go through a 40-hour training before they can start. Okay. Um, prevention is... <coughs> prevention for addiction. We mostly work in the schools with that program. Early Warnings is a program for adolescents and their adult, or excuse me, their parents or guardians mm -hmm. that come in. It is an early intervention program aimed at somebody who has maybe been caught at school with alcohol and trying to intervene before it becomes a bigger problem. And then we offer some programming at Chagrin Falls Park. We have psychiatry um, for children and adults. And then we have quite a few community treatment programs. And in behavioral health, there's a real movement to offer services actually in the community and usually in the home. So on the adult and child side, we, we have quite a bit of programming for that. So the, the TBS workers are kind of social workers who go out and try to help monitor and, and teach people coping skills. Uh, some of the other uh, programs, both for adults and kids, we go in and intensively work with them um, do counseling right in the home, often multiple times a week. Uh, and those are for folks who, for the adults are, who are severely and persistently mentally ill, and for the kids, those are kids and families who are really at risk of disrupting. This, this kid might end up in residential treatment if we don't go in and interview. We offer some school-based programs and some other intensive programs, and then um, under housing and residential, the Jog Youth Center, I want to talk a little bit more in depth in a minute about uh, the next list of programs uh, are for those adults who are severely and persistently mentally ill to provide housing in a variety of ways. Some of it is emergency housing and some of it is long-term housing. But these are folks who in the 1980s would have been in a psychiatric hospital but now are able because of all of these intensive services to, to be in the community. Some of them work, some of them don't, but they're able to maintain in the community. The Transitional Living Center um, is on the corner of Aquila in Ravenwood Drive and is a adult kind of crisis facility um, where people live. If somebody is really struggling and at risk of psychiatric hospitalization, they can go there and we can try to get folks stabilized. We have 24-7 staff. Um, we have nurses that come in and, and make sure people are getting their meds and things like that. How many residents in that building? It's a nine bed. Nine? Yeah. And I think six of them are the crisis, and then we have three transitional beds where people who need ongoing monitoring can stay longer, up to two years. And at this point, recovery housing, we have three recovery houses. 
Um, one is for women, one for men, and one is for moms and children. So those are fairly new. Mm -hmm. And then we have a couple additional services that, that I have listed there. Uh, the second goes more into detail. So it's really the same thing, only I'm just giving you more detail about that. So you know. Yeah. Um, thanks. Thanks for coming in. I, I too, like Jerry said, when I first got here, I was under the impression Ravenwood was some type of uh, offshoot of the county in some way. You know, yeah. I always thought it. And um, I think a lot of people, you know, have that, you know, or don't understand really what Ravenwood's role is. Or I know they do a lot of things and they affect a lot of different uh, departments in the in the county. And, and that being said, a lot of different revenue sources. So. And was, was Ravenwood created out of, like you said, back in the 60s, yeah. right? Was it created with the purpose of serving mainly just Geauga County? Or do you have other revenue source outside of Geauga County? Yeah, I'll talk about that a little bit. Um, we were under the Community Mental Health Act. So we were established as a community mental health center. And it was for Geauga County originally. And we still primarily serve Geauga County. But we do accept when we can people from other communities that, that cross the lines. I think that's happened a little bit more and more. And um, financially, we have many revenue streams. Um, mm -hmm. Each of the, the programs I mentioned has a little bit different revenue stream. Mostly we function like a doctor's office, a lawyer's office where we provide a service. And then we bill an insurance company, Medicaid, Medicare, um, the mental health board, we bill um, for those individuals who don't have any other way to pay, and there's a sliding fee scale that the Mental Health Board has established that we would have to follow. Mm -hmm. um, so that's primarily how, how we get paid. For um, the Mental Health Board, they have an annual request for proposal process, and we have to bid on services that we would like them to pay for and help us with, and then they make a decision about what they want to buy from us and what they're willing to, and then we, we bill out. So that, yeah, that's what I was kind of getting at. Is yeah. there is there a, you know, who's your competition? Is there a bidding process, or are you the only game in town, and we just turn right to you and basically every year you're in? Yeah, there's a bidding a, process, yeah. So we're not just basically turning around saying, here's X amount of money yep. every year, and... They put out yeah. a, a request for proposal around mm -hmm. March and we have about a month to respond and it's everything from the emergency services to counseling to the residentials and all those kinds mm -hmm. of things. Mm -hmm. Anybody else that is a, you have to be certified by the Ohio Department of Mental Health and Addiction Services and then you also have to have a national accreditation. We're, we're right. accredited by the Joint Commission. Then you're allowed to bid mm -hmm. and then they can decide. So and also like Department of Aging, right? They, I'm sure they do quite a bit with Ravenwood, correct? I mean as far mm -hmm. as is it is it the same type of process there as far as um, you know that when because every year you know when we were doing budget review I see in everybody's budget you know Ravenwood you know contract services there's Ravenwood I mean it's everybody the well, sheriff the mental health it's I mean everybody in some way is at some point giving quite a bit of money to Ravenwood I think it's I don't you probably know better than me how much it is annually. It's probably mm -hmm. well over ten million dollars a year, I think goes well, right. Well our whole more. entire budget's about right our revenues this year are probably about ten and a half million. So uh, it, that but that's also Medicaid and insurance okay. and client fees. That's just what I'm curious so, yeah, about. Mm -hmm. How much each of those are yeah. Our, our contract with the mental health board I know off the top of my head's about three million. Okay. And we don't always pull all that down, meaning right. we don't fill out all that. Um, but there are additional like they will get one example is um, the state opiate response grant that we bid on, as mm -hmm. did a number of other agencies, um, you know, Red Tulip, like Giaga, um, Family Pride, all bid on that and got certain different contracts. Parts of it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I, I would tell you, um, I've been there a long time, and mm -hmm. I am very community-minded. I have good relationships with a lot of those entities, mm -hmm. and you know that's what I've promoted with our folks who've gone kind out and developed those relationships. Kind of work as a group or whatever. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's how we've developed those programs, and that's why you see our name, mm -hmm. because I believe we're there to serve the community, and mm -hmm. we do a lot of assessment of what's going on out there. What are the needs? And what kind of program do we need? Mm -hmm. and, um, I think the Geauga Youth Center is an excellent example about how that all came to be mm -hmm. and how we work in the community. Um, in the late 90s, it, um, Judge Henry approached me and Nancy Silbach, who, as you probably know, is yeah. the council coordinator for many years, and met with us and felt that the facility was at that time a shelter 
care and felt it was underutilized. And so he said, what can we do to make it? I think it would be better utilized as a treatment facility, but we're not treatment providers. So with a combination of resources, both from the commissioners, um, you, you, would, you were paying the staff at mm -hmm. that time, and the Family First Council decided to pay for a clinical coordinator and a therapist. So for a number of years, Raven, and they, they did it with Ravenwood because we did have such a good working relationship, and we went in and provided those clinical services. Around 2007, Judge Henry felt that um, it didn't make sense for them to have the employees and us being in there trying to run a, a treatment program, and so worked through having those employees move to Ravenwood. And so they continued to pay the amount of money that they'd been paying for the youth center to support that because these were Geauga County kids. Then of course 2008 hit and the world fell apart financially and the commissioners had to cut everybody's budget by 20%. At that point we couldn't have, and I really wanted to explain this to you why we do this, um, at that point we couldn't have continued, we couldn't afford to, it was a 100,000 plus hit. Um, so with the permission of the commissioners and working with Job and Family Services, we placed a lot of kids there, so there's another entity that's involved. Mm -hmm. um, we started to take out of county kids, and that was the way we were able. They would pay a per diem for those kids, which we give the commissioners a certain stipend back for every day that they're there um, to make our budget work. And that's continued because that hasn't really changed. We've never gone, received that, we didn't get that 20% back when things got better. Um, and then Job and Family Services, Craig Swenson has been also helping to support the program through kids he places there. Mm -hmm. So I just think that's how we've developed these programs over the years. I could talk about quite a few different ones about how they came to be and why that is. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, again, I, I for some reason I, I know, no doubt, you, all the programs and services that you do are phenomenal, you know, they're so important in the community. I'm just curious, I've always been curious, and I'll just say it, about the, the relationship between the county and Ravenwood and just how that financially the checks and balances work mm -hmm. because at the end of the day Ravenwood's getting a lot of tax dollars absolutely okay and I've always wondered in a market driven you know is there not to say we would ever go out shopping around and looking for somebody other than Ravenwood but is there a alternative to Ravenwood like how do the how do the taxpayers or how do the commissioners know financially where you're, I know right. your cert, you know your product you do and the help you do for everyone is fantastic, but at the end of the day, how do we know we're getting a good right. deal? Well, I think um, we have to do a lot of outcome <coughs> data that we, mm -hmm. we share with the Mental Health Board and the Joint Commission and everybody that looks at us. We do a lot of outcome data to mm -hmm. show that we're doing a good job. Um, and it is competitive. And I'll tell you, when I came here in 86, there were like three organizations that were about the same size. Ravenwood, another family, I can't even remember the name of them, they went under, and Catholic Charities. We were all kind of the same size. Mm -hmm. And it's just been because we worked hard to develop these programs over a lot of years. It's a lot of relationship building, it's a lot of, oh, sure. wh when there's an issue, we're the ones that say, we'll, we'll jump take in there. Yeah. 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 And so, um, I know it might look like we're the only, the big game in town. But that's how it came to be. Okay. There is other agents, Family Pride, Lake Geauga, Catholic Charities, um, that, that that jump in there and bid on things. I just yeah. really I know this is hard to know, get it. It is. It's it's super hard work, and I know that you know the relationship has always been good. You know, I just just from a I guess a business standpoint, yeah. I've always been curious because yeah. I. Going back to what I said originally, I always just had this in my mind that Ravenwood was part of the county or something. That, you know, in that, or, you're not you know, alone in yeah, that. I yeah. think the fact that we shared the building with the um, Department on Aging and that we do work with so many county agencies. Mm -hmm. um, I know when I first came, I, I felt more comfortable over at Job and Family Services than I did at Ravenwood because that's where I came from. That's where I used sure. to work. So I just think that, yeah, it's easy to confuse us because we do have all those different contracts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, and then, so as far as the um, outcomes, um, for example, like mental health, you'll, on an annual basis, you'll, you will provide them with an twice annual year. review of all the services yeah. you provided. You twice a year we send them over to the board where mm -hmm. we are with all our outcomes. For every program on here, mm -hmm. we have to do one or two outcomes. In addition to lots of other things we're required to do that are outcomes, but for each program we have program specific, specific ones. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. And same, and sorry to tie up so much time and everybody's time here. I was just 
curious, but you know, and then I guess we can get into the youth center real quick. And sure. um, I know there's been some discussion as to um, start it off with, you know, I, I haven't been there in a, a couple of years, I think, you know, prior to COVID, but I know that place was starting to get pretty run down as far as the, um, <laughs> and it started off with maybe some carpet and a, a faucet and a toilet, but I think we're maybe thinking of something bigger there or doing a, a bigger right. project. Or, I think right now we have an opportunity um, to apply for a grant to do renovations for up to 750000 mm -hmm. It has to be a joint application with the commissioners in Ravenwood, the way the state's requiring it. Mm -hmm. um, and then JFS has said that they would do some match funds of sorts um, because they- Out of their levy money? money? Yes, mm -hmm. uh, and they have capital money out of the levy funds. I, I don't know the details mm -hmm. of that, but I know that they're invested in the process. Okay. So yeah. that's that's on my the plate right now. Yeah. And, and trying to figure out how we could come together and yeah, definitely complete I mean, that application. You know, I know. You know, talking years ago when with Craig, you know, he's always had a big vision for some type of, um, you know, some other counties have, you know, designated youth centers on and mm -hmm. in their counties in county. And that's been something that he's brought to us and and i've always said you know bring us a business plan back and mm -hmm. let's talk about it and i think it's an idea it's it's been a good idea but we need to see the the um the nuts and bolts of how that thing would work you know if we're gonna um, shine this one up that we have down the street or if we build something new or what you know mm -hmm. we got to look at some options i think right and right. that's kind of how we've been approaching all of our capital improvement projects throughout the county is to um, you know come up with a few different scenarios so you know I'm, I'm happy to explore that with with Ravenwood and the county and, and improve it on that mm -hmm. you know and also just to throw it in um, we need a place for respite too so right. I know that's been a thing with the juvenile court and having somewhere where you know on a Friday night at you know three in the morning or whatever they need a place to put right. somebody that they can utilize that building and our intention is if we if we can do either the renovations or if it, it's better to build a new one is we probably <coughs> it at a 16 bed facility you get mm -hmm. past 16 beds and regulations get a little crazy and I think that's probably enough mm -hmm. and Craig has even said um, it's backed off the needs backed off a little bit so I think mm -hmm. we're thinking that's a nice size uh, how and many residents in there now I'm not seven sure. eight yeah it's going to be in that we, we really have capped it at nine with COVID because we have nine bedrooms and we're trying to keep people in individual bedrooms for now um, we are licensed for 16 um, but if you look at the facility you get more than like 10 or 11 adolescent bodies in there it's really good. yeah and plus so the uh, females and males and females yes. you got an issue there right you got to keep them separate and, yes yeah. and trying to, to yeah. Um, and just the layout is for sur surveillance is not good. We have cameras everywhere, but you can't always be at the camera. I think mm -hmm. I went on a tour. I think it was Trumbull County. I went yes. or something. Yeah, yeah. Did. and um, they have kind of wings or something that yes. they can, you know, depending on what the population looks like, they can flip flop it or you know. Ours is a little like that, but yeah. it, it's not set up the way it needs to be. At this point. Mm -hmm. And then also, um, you know, I know we have a school in the basement, yes. right? They've been kind of converted to um, but improving on that because I think it is important to you know instead of sending kids away I mean some kids have to go to residential treatment right. you know and it's you know a little more complicated but for the kids that we can keep close to their school close to their family their support group and, and, and having school in there I think is it's great big. yeah, yeah. So, keeping kids in the community uh, clinically is amazing and just the outcomes are much better and it's also mm -hmm. economical mm -hmm. I mean to send our workers all over the state uh, I think Craig came up with some numbers that were like, like as far as driving travel, and travel yeah. expense it takes up a whole day if they have mm -hmm. to go to Columbus or Toledo where some of the facilities are because they have to put eyes on the kids mm -hmm. yeah, yeah so yeah yeah but also for the families. I mean, it's unrealistic to think some of these families are going to travel, you know, two, three hours away to see their, their you know, team in another you know, facility. Yeah. So how you keep them connected is the key. Absolutely. Yeah, I think, you know, kids that are from here, we want to keep them yeah. here, you know, as much as, we, as much as possible. Yeah. yeah. But, um, yeah, I, again, you know, I talked to Jim. I see Jim Adams in the back there, and we've, he's brought it up uh, about the grant, and, um, you know, we're, I think we're interested in taking a look at what you come up with. So, okay. is there a time frame on the seven hundred fifty thousand? 
Jim, do you know? I don't know the answer to that. Yeah. I, I mean, because I know we talked eight months ago or so, and uh, we had a lot of ideas that were, you know, thrown up. Right. And, uh, I know we talked with the state in August. We had a conference call with them, and I do have the application, and I'm starting to work on that. But um, I'm not sure, Jared, I'll have to work with you about how do we come up with an idea of do we build or do we renovate this site? And I was going forward yeah. with renovating, so I don't. Well, we just quite we sure need to have those it. discussions and get in more in depth in okay. the process. Yeah. So. I mean, we. We did go out to bid for, um, or we started the process of going out to bid for an uh, owner's rep. Owner's rep and architects, and we wrote those proposals, the request for qualifications to be very broad. Can so we, we could, we could use it for this? this. Yes. Yeah. 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 Right. We did that intentionally because we knew that the, the Department of Aging item, we have some other areas we may need, yeah. we need to do something. So, so this we, is pretty broad, so it's, so it's broad. for all the facilities in the county, so we could utilize it. And that's what they do. They'll come in and say, you know, you can only, you know, put so much lipstick on this building or whatever, and it's time to maybe start thinking a new one, or you know, or vice versa. So, um, yeah. And it's, I mean, it's a unique facility. There's a lot of special requirements that you have to have with a mm -hmm. facility like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe that's, um, you know, we we should be getting. Well, we'll be reviewing those proposals soon. Yes. Okay. So once we get those, I think maybe we, then we could turn, if we pick one, then we can put them in touch with Correct. with uh, the youth center. Yep. Okay. okay. Do you have a, a time idea? I, I'd just like to get back to the state and say this is where we are. And we have, we have the same as qualifications that are sitting on my desk right now, so hopefully we'll have something on the next Tuesday's agenda for Okay. So after that, it's really good. Okay, that would be wonderful. Yeah. Um, any questions for us? Besides that, no. <laughs> well, thanks for all the details. Yeah, it, and thank you for everything that you do, and, and your whole staff. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. It, this is tough times. Yeah. We're seeing a lot of um, a, a lot of people come through the doors at record numbers with the, the pandemic, and yeah, you know, we have the same staff as everybody does. So. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> Thank you very much. Thank I really you. appreciate this opportunity. My card's in there. If any of you have additional questions, I would love to talk more with you. Okay. okay. I don't Thanks talk for a long time about yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for coming in. Thank you, Thanks, Vicky. Thank you too Thanks. for coming in. Three. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks. <laughs> um, I, Adrian, never heard back from them, um, but I do have the financials that um, we are we lined out. Took that off. We took it off. So I need you to initial. On the actual financials, one on each line for the removal of that. Just the front page? Yes, just on that one item. And your um, salad waste meeting that was scheduled for today is on cancel. Yes. Or it wasn't on my calendar, so I just assumed that. I, I removed it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, was like, I removed it. Yeah. It was, it was not planning on it. Yeah. yeah no. Okay. Jerry, do you have anything else? I do not have anything else. Okay. Any public comment? We have uh, no pack here. Would you like to? Would you like to introduce yourself? Oh. Hi, Jeff Heinrich, no pack relationship manager for Geauga County. Just wanted to come every now and then, see that I'm not missing anything going on in Geauga County. I was just at the Township Association uh, dinner at the. Burton Township, correct? Yeah, at Kent State University. A really nice facility there, and it looks like there's a lot of exciting things coming up uh, with improvements. So, um, yeah, just wanted to be a fly on the wall and make sure everything's going okay here. Okay. And if you ever need anything, Jim, you have my information. I think I passed out my card uh, a while ago to you guys as well. Yeah. Uh, if you ever need anything, have any questions, feel free to give me a call, shoot me an email. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anything exciting at the uh, health board? Um, for those that are uh, those that are interested, we are doing uh, uh, we're getting the, the teachers their booster shots uh, from Saturday clinics in December on the fourth and the second dose booster shot on the or sorry booster shot single shot the fourth and the eighteenth we're off that to school teachers that are interested in it and then we're also having our first five to eleven year old clinic for those that are interested uh, this Saturday and then also. 
Uh, the follow up will be December 11th on that Saturday. Um, we've, we've been very fortunate uh, with staffing changes and whatnot that we're still able to operate on Saturdays, and that way, you know, parents who are working, they're able to come on their own time, and then teachers, obviously, the school is maintained running, and we're not interrupting the school services there. Um, still, 100%, if, you, if you'd like to get it, come on in, and if you don't, you know, it's fine, but if those who would like it, we're, we're available and open. Um, other than that, we're just kind of moving forward with a couple other things, and we're, we're here to help if anybody needs anything. Good job. Thank you. Thanks. When, when's the next Board of Health meeting? Uh, the next Board of Health meeting is not this Wednesday, it's the next Wednesday. When uh, Thanksgiving? Yep, yeah, it's the, the night before, and it's also the night before Christmas Eve. So I am praying to the, <laughs> to the Lord above that uh, we get out of there relatively quickly. It's not another four and a half hour meeting because, yeah. <laughs> Might be. <laughs> did you have a meeting last night? Uh, we did not. We had one on the second Tuesday. Oh. Um, we were at uh, Chardon Township, the, the big conference was okay. just taken two of those days. Um, with some of these longer meetings, we need a second meeting, we get stuff done, we didn't get done on the, the main meeting. Are you taking applications for the um, commissioner still, or is that what's going on with yes. that? Yes, uh, the health commissioner, we, uh, we're still taking applications if someone likes to send one in. Uh, they also posted the administrator job as well, so they're, they're looking at those applications. Um, and we also have a clerk position open as well, if I recall correctly. Gotcha. Yeah, with those three positions open. Okay, thank you. Awesome. Can I do a drink? Motion. Motion. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Aye.